Hello comrades and welcome back to the Shanka show. Thank you for joining. Today we'll talk about how fun it used to be to be a gay person in Soviet Union. Well, wasn't fun at all. Being homosexual and actually being caught having sex with other men was a criminal activity and could be punished up to eight years in prison. Interestingly, there's nothing in the criminal code of Soviet Union about sex between women. But if the guy get caught having sex with the other guy, you can get up to five years if it's just two adults. But if there's a homosexual sex used in physical force or having sex with underage person or using its weakness or something like that, you can get term up to eight years in prison. So it's interestingly, for being gay, you go to jail where we had quite a few cases when people would use you as a woman in prison. So how did it all start? Well, it all started from OGPU, which is in 1930s was predecessor of KGB. Uh, so Comrade Stalin got a letter from the chief of OJPU, Genrich Yagada, that he had concerns that the, the different orgies going on in Moscow and Leningrad, which is called St. Petersburg again these days, and during these orgies, young, healthy youth is getting molested, and also they get um, recruited as spies. Uh, so soldiers and Navy people and young uh, Komsomol members uh, being molested and turned into spies in the same time while having gay sex. So also they started talking that in the newspapers that it's a really uh, capitalistic way of having sex and it shouldn't have nothing like that going on in Soviet Union and people started even joking that if you destroy the homosexualism fascism will disappear we probably will never know but it is uh, possible that approximately a thousand men a year were arrested and sent to jail and labor camps for gay sex. In the 80s that amount uh, started declining and uh, in 1989 for example in Russia itself about 500 people were arrested and sentenced to jail time for gay sex. Now, KGB loved this article number 121, which is criminal punishment for sex, for gay sex, because it was an awesome tool to recruit people to spy on other people. Hey, you can tell us what's going on in your community, or you can go to jail and find out what's going on in that community. Also, it was a great tool to punish people for doing anything against Soviet government. A lot of famous people, artists, movie producers, writers, journalists were punished by uh, arresting them on this article 1 to 1 for homosexual relations. For example, one of the most famous uh, Soviet, also Ukrainian and Armenian, uh, movie producer uh, Sergei Parajanov uh, he was arrested in 1973 uh, for this article 122 which is in Ukraine which is similar to 121 in Soviet Union for having uh, homosexual relations with underage boy and he went to jail but right before that he was protesting against a massive uh, political arrest in Ukraine, Soviet Ukraine, and also he signed a letter. There was 139 uh, people, uh, different artists and uh, uh, writers that signed a big letter uh, protesting against the political repressions. 
and in the end he ended up arrested for uh, being gay and sent to prison and a lot of people in the world um, Federico Fellini, Roberto Rossellini, and Andrei Tarkovsky, Jacques-Luc Godard uh, were uh, asking f to release him but it failed so this is how people were punished um, well not for being gay but actually for saying or doing something against Soviet government So let's take a look at the most famous uh, Soviet people that got arrested uh, for being gay. Uh, as we mentioned, Sergei Parajanov, uh, the movie producer, he was arrested twice for the same thing, Article 1 to 1. Uh, Vadim Kozin, uh, he was a Russian uh, singer, he was arrested in 1944. Nikolai Kluyev, uh, he was a, a poet and uh, in 1934 he was arrested so he was almost like the very first person uh, who got prosecuted for uh, uh, living with another guy and a little bit later in 1937 he was shot but there was a different reason next one is Nikolai Yezhov uh, one of the Soviet government officials uh, so there is also a version that um, that was during the time when Stalin uh, was purging the whole top brass of Communist Party and there's a rumor that Yezhov uh, admitted sexual relations with other men for the reason to escape more serious punishment but it didn't work out and so he got shot in 1940 uh, Gennady Trifonov, uh, he is a famous writer, poet and also dissident uh, he wrote the book called The Net about the love between two prisoners and he was arrested and, and got a term of four years uh, according to his words uh, because he was supporting Alexander Solzhenitsyn uh, Lev Klein who was Soviet Russian uh, scientist archaeologist and philo uh, philologist Zinovy Kagarotsky uh, he was a um, professor and also he was writing uh, performances for theaters. Nikolai Panchenko, uh, Naum Starkman, who was a Russian pianist and a teacher, music teacher. Lvova no Boris Lvova Nohin, who was also a uh, Soviet and Russian um, uh, theater. A person he was writing uh, acts in theater and also he was handling ballet and so there's a quite an extensive list of famous people that uh, got arrested and sent to jail for gay relations but probably most of the reason was that they were doing something against Soviet government tell you a little story um, fortunately uh, so it was only once when I kind of met a gay person in Soviet Union I would say it face to face and uh, it was a uh, I believe probably like the end of 1980s I was shopping in the bookstore uh, at that time I started already learning English and I wanted to uh, to start uh, teaching English uh, to my brother who is 15 years younger so I stopped at that uh, bookstore downtown Kiev because there was the only store that was selling books on English and I was picking a book and I found a book um, made in China at that time and it was like a Chinese fairy tale on English and this really nice older man was helping me to choose a book so we started talking and next thing he's like hey you know I have a lunch break right now uh, would you mind to go for a walk and so that time I probably was maybe like 17 18 year old so I'm like oh sure uh, so we went on a walk and started talking he was asking a lot of questions really nice guy 
Um, and then somehow questions kind of started uh, going a little bit funny way. He asked if I have a girlfriend, if I ever had a girlfriend, and it went as far as he asked, you know, do I have a lot of hair in my body? And that's when I kind of started feeling, uh, kind of thinking, that's a strange conversation. But as I said, I was really young and naive, and I even couldn't imagine that uh, somebody would, uh, you know, be hitting on me, a guy. And um, in the end, he invited me for uh, to stop uh, the place for the ice cream. So we got in the line to buy some ice cream, said he wanted to treat me with some ice cream. And uh, that was the moment when it uh, finally dawned on me what was wrong with this picture. Because I looked around, you know, there was uh, quite a few couples in the line. So there's always a girl, you know, and a guy. And there was only two guys were me and this older man. And then I realized, oh my goodness, he's buying me an ice cream like I'm a girl. So I still had my ice cream, but then he wanted to my phone number so we can hang out again. And um, I gave him some uh, made up number and I never saw him again. So that was the only time that I actually met a um, gay person in Soviet Union. And there was one more time already in LA. Uh, I came to visit my cousin that was probably like 1996 or 97. So I was about 25, 26. I just finished working in a summer camp in Michigan. That's how I came to the United States to work in a summer camp on exchange program. So I was a lifeguard all summer long and that time I was working out pretty hard. So I was you know, well built, had a nice tan and I was on my way to Monica Beach to go swimming in the Pacific Ocean, riding the bus in a tank top. And this guy you know, just kind of sat next to me and started talking to me and introduced himself. He said that he was a photographer and he's uh, specializing in male models. And right away he produced this little like a photo album and he showed his work, a bunch of you know guys he was taking pictures of. And he said he's really interested because uh, he thought I'm having a you know possibility or opportunity to become a, a famous male model. So he wanted to do a photo session with me and he gave me his business card. Uh, so when I got home later on that night, uh, I told that story to my cousin. And it stayed like, it was kind of strange, but uh, my cousin confirmed my concerns. He said, well, if you want to go for that photo session, you might as well bring some KY with you because it might get really interesting. So I never called the guy. So this is what uh, kind of gay related experiences I had in my life. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the story and thank you for your attention to my channel. Have a good day. Goodbye.